Hey, good morning, Capstone. What a joy it is to be in his presence this morning. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, the privilege what God has given us to come to uh, his presence through online and worshiping him, praising his name this morning. And also we praise God for uh, the new month what God has given us in this year, 2022, uh, in the month of August. Uh, so we have been seeing his faithfulness, his blessings, his providence throughout this uh, past month and we praise God for the new season what God has given us to enjoy in his presence. Uh, I would like to read a scripture portion from Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 to through 25. If you have your Bibles, you can just open your Bibles and read along with me. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassion never fail. There are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. So this morning, let's once again remind ourselves about the compassion of God and the loving kindness, what he is showing upon our lives. Uh, indeed, they are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. So this morning, once again, come to his presence with the same attitude and uh, the mindset uh, that we need to have, that God is faithful and his loving compassion is, uh, is everlasting. Uh, let's, let's bow our heads and look to Lord in prayer and let's enjoy the worship. Father, we want to thank you once again for the opportunity and we praise you and we bless your name, God. Thank you for adding another month in our lives as gifts in our lives, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness. And we want to praise you and we want to give glory and honor to your presence, God, to your name, Jesus. We praise you as we come together, join our voices to worship you, God. We, help, we ask you to help us to enjoy your presence, God. We thank you and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty precious name. I pray. Everybody say, Amen, Amen. Let's join our hands and welcome our worship. And let's enjoy the time of worship.
praise Him, the King of Heaven. How many of you believe our God is our strength? Yeah? So let's sing for joy. If we lift our hands, He will lift us up. Come now, praise His name, all His saints of God. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength, our strength. Joyful heart, let's sing. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength, our strength. If we call to Him, He will answer us. If we run to Him, he will run to us if we lift our hands. He will lift us up. Come now, praise His name, all His saints of God. Draw near to Him. Draw near to Him. He is here with us. Give Him your love. He's in love with us. He will heal our hearts. He will cleanse our hands. If we rend our hearts. joy giver if we call to him he answers us if we draw to him he runs to us wow. he has taken care of us in every moment of our life he's taking care of our needs he made sure that we are not in want he's with us every single moment of our life he has given us everything he has given us our, his life for us Worship Him for that. And reflect and think what have we done for the love that He He pours out on us? How much do we love Him back? Can we at this moment tell, say from our heart, God, I love you. 
You're the most precious thing. You're the one that I seek. You're all that I need. Let's seek him. Let's worship him.
Touching it.
works in our life even when we can't see. He works and makes sure everything works together for our good in our life. That is His promise. That everything will work together for our good, for our eternal good. Can we believe that and trust Him? stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel that you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working Good morning, Capstone, once again. Uh, thank you so much for joining this online service. Hope you had a wonderful time uh, experiencing his presence through worship. And uh, we praise God for the opportunity and the privilege uh, God has given us to you know, connect like this to this medium, to, through this technology. And we praise God for, um, you know, for the amazing opportunity. And this morning, let's uh, look into some of uh, the updates of our church. Uh, every Wednesday evening, 7 p.m., we meet online. Uh, we have Telugu service happening every Wednesday. So please do join, and uh, if you have any of your friends or family relatives who can understand Telugu and who, can, uh, who wants to join the Telugu service, you can you know, encourage them to, join, to be part of Telugu service. Also, uh, be part of this service, and uh, we will enjoy you know, worshipping our God in our local native language, and uh, you will be blessed. Also, we have something called focus groups, which is happening online. Um, you know, uh, every month, uh, different group of people you know meet together uh, and uh, have a uh, in-depth study in through Bible, and you know, uh, have some some time of good fellowship together. Uh, we have focus groups, and uh, we have four different uh, you know uh, categories: warriors, divers, beginners, and messengers. So if you want to be part of any of these groups, you can just you know, uh, scan the QR code, uh, which is displayed on your screens, and you can be part of uh, these groups. And we will you know, you know, get in touch with you and uh, we we'll, can give you more updates on these uh, groups. And once again, uh, we praise God for the new month, and we enter into a new month, a new season. We praise God for all his faithfulness and his, you know, uh, uh, his providence, his protection, 
through our lives and in our, we praise God. And this time, let's uh, once again come to his altar, his presence, um, uh, with what, what God has given us. We come to him, we give him back uh, what he has you know, blessed us with. Uh, let's uh, prepare our hearts and uh, um, let's give to Lord cheerfully because God loves those who give cheerfully, isn't it? As uh, you can see the QR code on the screen, you can give unto the Lord by scanning the QR code, uh, your tithes and your, your offerings. Uh, you can give to missions. Uh, we praise God for the blessings what you know, we are enjoying every single day, isn't it? Let's pray and give unto the Lord. Father, we want to thank you once again for the opportunity and thank you for every blessing that we have in our lives, every blessing that we enjoy in our lives, God. Thank you for our jobs, our business. Thank you for our families, God. Thank you for your protection and your providence. And we thank you for everything what we have, God. As we, as your children, um, God, as, as they give unto you, God, I pray that you, you bless them 30 folds, 60 folds, and 100 folds, God. We praise you and we thank you once again for everything, every blessing that we enjoy. And everything, when we believe that everything comes from you and, and everything is from you, Father God. And we thank you once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as we give.
Good morning, Gavson. Thank you very much for joining us on this online service today. Um, of course, um, on this very first Sunday of August, we welcome you um, into the presence of God. Uh, wherever you are, as we are connected together um, through using this technology, um, you know, God is very real at the, same, at the place that you are in, at the place that I am in right now. And uh, he's uniting our hearts together uh, as he fills us with his presence. And such a joy it is for us to be connected like this, to worship God together. I, um, you know, whatever reasons you are unable to make it to an in-person service, uh, we pray that those paths would be straightened out uh, so that you can also uh, be in part of fellowship of brothers and sisters together uh, to worship. Uh, if you're in a different city, that God would make a way for you uh, to, to be part of a great fellowship where uh, you are growing together um, you know, in, uh, in the fellowship of brothers and sisters um, in his church. Uh, until then, well, I want to praise God for the opportunity that God gave us to be connected like this online. I also I understand that some of you uh, are part of uh, you know, different fellowships and still are uh, joining us online um, today to receive the word. I want to thank you for doing, choosing to do so. Uh, today, we will, um, you know, uh, as we worshiped God, as we gave our best to our God, we also would, uh, uh, you know, it would be important for us to sit at his feet and receive his word. And today being the First Sunday of August, we are, of course, uh, going to partake in communion uh, towards the end of this, uh, of the Word of God. Um, in fact, we will partake in it as a, an expression, a response uh, to the Word of God that we are going to receive uh, today. Uh, so before we talk about what God wants to speak to us today, before we listen to the Word of God uh, today, I just want to remind you of a couple of things that are coming ahead uh, this weekend, the coming weekend, that is on the 13th of um, of August, which is, uh, we, we were ca we're calling it the Freedom Weekend. This uh, particular weekend on the 13th, we have um, um, a time of worship and praise together, um, worshiping our God and praying for our nation together. We call it the Open Heaven Evening on Saturday evening at Dream Center, in-person service. Um, um, you know, God willing, we will also, um, um, you know, if possible, if you can join us here, um, in person, it would be great if you're in the city. You're welcome to join us at 7 p.m. on Saturday, the 13th of August, uh, to worship our Lord together and pray together. Um, Lord willing, if all things work out together. Of course, if you're not in the city, uh, you may be able to join us online if, um, you know, if everything falls in place and technology supports us, we'd be able to do that live too, so that you can also worship along with us together and pray uh, with us together. Also, on the Monday of the 15th, that is August 15th, that would be the 75th um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Independence Day of our country. And, and what a joy it is um, um, you know, to celebrate the goodness of God on our nation, that God gave us uh, the freedom and the Constitution allows us the freedom of worship, freedom of speech. And um, you know, that is why we're able to talk about Jesus to others, receive Jesus, and you know, worship Jesus freely and openly, all by, uh, you know, there may be some difficulties, and yet at large, we enjoy the freedom that God, is, God has granted us uh, through this great nation. So we want to praise God uh, for this nation. And of course, on that day, um, like every year, uh, of course, uh, uh, during the pandemic, we couldn't do it. But on that day, we will have a church community outing. Uh, we will, uh, together as a body of Christ, we will uh, come together to celebrate each other and, of course, have a church day out together um, this, uh, this coming um, uh, 15th of August. So if you are in the city, you're welcome to join us on that day. You just have to um, 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 uh, call up one of our pastoral team, uh, either, pa either me or Pastor, Pastor Janet or Pastor Eshwan, and we'll, able to, we'll be able to guide you as to how you can uh, be part of that church day out on the 15th of August. All right, so we are in the middle of a 21-day prayer together. Um, uh, starting on August 1st, we started every morning at 7 a.m. We are gathering together and praying together, both in D.C., in person and online. And as many of you are joining us online. We understand that uh, it is a time where you get ready to go to your offices or schools um, during that period. Um, uh, thank you for tuning in in spite of, um, you know, getting ready and, uh, and uh, you know, on your way to offices and 
and schools. Uh, thank you, thank God for all of you. So continue to tune in. We are actually, um, you know, um, a meeting every single day here at DC also. Um, so in case you were around and if you got ready early, you can actually drop in and uh, spend some time in the presence of God and uh, pray to pray for yourself, uh, pray together, and you can join us in prayer uh, while we uh, do the prayer. Uh, together here in this place. So thank God for all those who are joining us, uh, both in person and online, every morning at 7 a.m. Um, we are actually, um, um, during this season of prayer and, uh, and um, I know, devotions together, we're actually studying the parables of Jesus. And so in, uh, in uh, keeping in, in keeping continuity in my mind, um, even though I had a, a different um, um, series that I wanted to do during the month of uh, August, I uh, I felt, oh, how about continuing the uh, lessons that God is teaching us through the parables of Jesus Christ. And so today also we will look at one uh, uh, um, passage, one parable that is uh, very familiar to all of us. And out of this parable, uh, you know, uh, let's learn a lesson together. Uh, in fact, it, it is an apt parable um, in the light of the communion that we're going to partake uh, together. So at your home, if you... Um, if you have the elements ready, keep them closer by um, because obviously we're going to partake in communion as a response to the word uh, this morning that we would hear from the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, so would you like to turn your Bibles? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 18. And I want to read uh, one of the most familiar parables, um, if not uh, a, par a parable that is um, taught uh, you know, thousands of times to every Christian must be familiar with this. Um, so let's go to that passage and let's read it. It's a, it's a little uh, 16 verses together. So follow along with me. It's, a, it's an interesting parable. And um, we would still learn something very important for our own personal, personal lives. If not new things, at least we will learn some very important reminders. Uh, sometimes even though we know certain things, there is a possibility that we might ignore them or forget them. So it's good for us to go back and read um, and remind ourselves. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of, God, God, of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up, up to date with uh, servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process... One of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Um, well, actually, 10,000 talents. That's what it says. He couldn't pay. So his master offered him, offered that he be sold along with his wife and his children and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it at all. It, at all. Then the master was filled with pity for him. He released him and forgave his debt. Uh, but when the king, when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. Well, actually, um, um, uh, 10 dinari. He grabbed him uh, by his throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a, a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it. He pleaded, but his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in a prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king, told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in and uh, called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your own fellow servant? Just as I had mercy on you, then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's why, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Powerful uh, illustration uh, to a question that Peter posed. Now, as you can see, the occasion of this parable, this particular parable was, uh, um, was when Peter asked Jesus the question, um, um, you know, about forgiving others. Um, his his, his um, 
um, uh, perspective, Peter's perspective of forgiveness was, uh, can I offer forgiveness? How many times can I offer forgiveness? I don't mind offering forgiveness, but there must be some limit. At some point, we have to stop forgiving people who are offending us. And so Peter said, can I forgive a person seven times? Now, in Peter's mind, um, um, it, it is natural that as a Jew, um, he would keep Jewish teaching, Jewish traditions and scriptures in his mind. Uh, the Torah uh, approves up to three times of forgiveness to a person. If somebody offends you for any reason, you can forgive him one, two, three times. Now, Peter probably thought, I'm, be I'm being very gracious uh, by saying, can I forgive a person seven times? Now, Jesus immediately replied to him by saying, uh, listen, not seven times, 70 times seven. Now, the, the number is, is not necessarily the expression of a calculation. The number is an expression. The, the number that Jesus said is an expression that, that is like, uh, bound, uh, there, are, there, is no limit of, there is no limit for forgiveness. That's his point, Jesus' point. Uh, the truth is, um, Jesus is confronting Peter with, a, with the truth that the spirit of forgiveness really knows no boundaries. We'll come to that a little later. What Jesus is saying is you can't put a limit to the number of times you will forgive a person. There is no limit. There's no boundaries. And so in order to explain that, Jesus goes on to talk about um, a parable and um, you know, talks about the graciousness of God, the grace of God when it comes to forgiveness. Now, of course, the parable is extremely clear to all of us that a man uh, was uh, owed um, millions of dollars. In fact, um, uh, in our present calculations, if you, can, if you, if you make it, um, uh, what he owed um, this particular king was 10,000 10, talents. Now, in those days, 10,000 talents is equal to 375 tons. 375 tons of silver. Now, that's 3,75,000 kilograms of silver. Uh, that's a lot of money. Now, you can un understand how much of uh, weight of debt is upon this, this person who was brought in front of the king. And obviously, the weight of the, you know, the burden of paying back such a huge lump sum, such a huge debt back to his king is probably weighing him down. And he's struggling to pay back. He's come to the king and king asked him, when are you going to pay? Are you going to pay? And he says, well, can you give me a little more time? I, I just can't pay right now. I don't have enough money to pay back. And of course, as it is customary in, 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 a, in, in, a, in the ancient world, when you, you um, uh, take a debt from somebody and you are unable to pay, obviously you have to pay back that particular debt through the property that you owned. Now, apparently, this man has no property left by himself. So the king looked at him and said, uh, um, looked at uh, the other servants, the collectors, and said, listen, uh, obviously, you can't collect anything from this guy. He doesn't have anything to give. So here is what you can do. Uh, uh, take this guy, uh, take his wife and his children, sell them in the market, and get that money and fill in uh, the debt and write it off. Now, uh, you understand, in those days, the culture demands that either you pay by your property, and if you don't have a property, you then have to become a slave to that person or be sold as a slave to somebody else so that the money can be replenished, uh, uh, replaced in your place. So there you go. His predicament is very serious. He doesn't have anything to pay back, and he's, not in, he's in no condition to pay back. And uh, in fact, he's actually saying, um, uh, uh, don't, don't take away my debt. That's not what he's saying. He's actually saying, I want to pay, just give me a little more time. And with the sincerity with which he was seeking for um, debt, um, uh, you know, time for uh, paying back the debt, moved the king. And Jesus talks about how uh, the, the king took pity on this guy when he begged him, saying that, please give me a little more time. I don't want my children to suffer, my wife to suffer because of me, um, uh, because of this debt. I, I would like you to give me a little more time. I want to pay back to you. King took pity on him, realizing that this guy actually cannot pay. Even though he gives time, even if king grants more time to this boy, this person, he will not be in a position to pay back. Not his entire life, he cannot pay back. This, look at the 375 tons of silver. When are you actually going to earn that money? 
that much money and pay back. That's near impossibility. Now, the number may be exaggerated just for our uh, uh, understanding sake, but um, you know, in present, if we um, take the measurement, the uh, the the, the um, um, uh, you know the uh, co the cost of uh, the 375 tons of silver and compare it with present day currency, you are talking about nearly three billion you know, uh, U.S. dollars. That's a lot of money. Three billion United States dollars. Um, that, that's a huge amount of money, and he knows that this guy cannot pay it back. So what he said was, um, all right, now I know you cannot pay it back. I also realize that even if I give you time, you cannot. So therefore, I'm taking pity on you, and I'm going to do this as a favor for you, and, um, and that is this. First of all, um, you don't need to pay me back completely. I forgive you for not paying back, and I would release you of that debt. You don't have to think about this debt anymore. Can you think of that? Can you think of loans that you carry in your life? Um, let's say a housing loan or some other loan, and it's kind of piling up, and because of the downturn of, of the economy, you're, you, you, you just are unable to pay back. Um, you know, your house would probably be pulled to, to be mortgaged, but the bank comes to you, and banker comes. This would never happen, all right? But just for the sake of illustration, the banker comes to you and you are heavy with burden and you know since you can't pay, the house would be taken over by the bank. You'd be thrown out of your own home. Your hard-earned money, all this money that you paid so far would come to nothing because um, now that you have so much to pay, there is no way you can pay and you know uh, that you're going to lose the one thing that you held your security on is going to be taken away. But the banker comes to your home and uh, sits in your, uh, in your front room and tells you, uh, listen, the bank decided uh, this 20, 75th, uh, um, in, on the occasion of 75th Indian Independence Day celebrations, we are going to mafia your entire debt. Some of you who are listening to me are thinking, I wish that would happen to us. You know? I, I can understand that. Um, we, you know, but the possibility of that happening is zero, right? But then it actually happened in this story that Jesus is, 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 is sharing with, with people. He said, listen, uh, uh, can you think of the kind of burden that would be lifted off you if a banker says that to you? Can you think of the relief that you would experience? And, and this man would have experienced a real deep relief at that point of time. So much of grace. You know, if the king gave him time, that itself would be an act of mercy. If the king looked at him and said, listen, every day you work, 50% of what you earn every single day would come back to this. Um, instead of, I know all your life, even if you work all your life, you can't pay me $3 billion back. There's no way you can do that. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a concession. The concession is very simple. Go to work every single day, earn money, half of it, give it back to me. Or maybe 75% of it, give it back to me. And the 25% is what you can do for your home. Obviously, you need to run your home. So 25% um, or 50% would be yours. Even if, he, even if the king gives such, such discount, that itself would have relieved him of so much of tension. But the, the king took one step more. Not only he was not giving his... Um, no, no, he was, it's not about giving time. Neither it is about giving concession. The king actually took away the entire debt and said, go, I'm releasing you for free. What a relief he must have felt, right, at that moment. A man who receives so much of grace, you expect that kind of person to be filled with gratitude, filled with humility, filled with so much of uh, I know, ah, I, I, the kindness that was shown towards him, that he wouldn't be able to contain that kind of kindness, contain that kind of gratitude. He would uh, find a way to express it back to, back to the king or back to somebody else, right? You would expect him to do that. But as he walked out of that court, uh, only to find himself confronting another fellow servant of his, uh, that, that particular person is not a servant of his. He's still the servant of the king, even the other one. So they both are fellows. Uh, no, they both are servants of the king itself. 
So he's a fellow co-worker who took 10 dinarai, uh, sorry, 100 dinarai. Bible says 100 dinarai. That's a laborer's daily wage um, in ancient days. Well, I know uh, with all the inflation and with all the currency exchange, it might look a little higher amount right now, about $4,000 in today's exchange. But it's still, uh, at that point of time, a daily wage. About $18 today. I think $20 is the standard right now across the globe. So let's say $20 is what he's earning that day. And that's all he needed to pay to this man. And yet, when he also, just like the first one, begged for forgiveness, be begged for a little more time, just give me a little more time, I want to pay back. This guy couldn't, wouldn't wait. Not only he didn't give the time, not only he didn't give any concession, he actually threw him into the prison, caught by throat, and demanded that he paid. And when he said, give me more time, uh, complained to the police and got him into the prison. Now that act upset everybody. And Bible, Jesus talks about how it upset everybody who saw this, because some of them have actually seen what the king had done for this first guy, and they got really upset. You know, upset means you can um, imagine the kind of upset they got. They would have been furious at the way that this man, the first guy, dwelt, dealt with the second guy, when the first guy should have been a different guy, right? After he received the kind of um, um, forgiveness that he received from the king. And yet, he was very unmerciful. He has been show, shown so much of kindness, so much of mercy. He received so much of grace, and yet he responded completely opposite with an ingratitude um, mind and um, responded to uh, the fellow debtor, um, uh, his debtor, in a very rude manner and put him in the prison. So obviously the king's servants went back to the king, explained the whole um, uh, you know, situation and explained what happened. And the king now got furious when he uh, you know, demanded for this guy to be presented in front of him. And then uh, the king, uh, what the king said, I can imagine the anger in his words, uh, you know, I showed so much of kindness to you. I showed so much of grace to you. I have given you a life of full freedom when you don't deserve a single thing. I've given you so much. All you had to do was just offer the same thing, an ounce of what you received to somebody else, and you couldn't even show that. You evil, that's the, that's the strongest word Jesus could use. Uh, you evil servant. The word is... Um, Almost equaling that person with the Satan, you know, you evil fellow. You couldn't even do that? And got him thrown into the prison. Till he pays back, which is never going to happen, right? We, we already talked about it. So that is in nutshell the, the story. Of course, we all know, the fam we are very familiar with this. And so uh, obviously we kind of know that this parable is specifically talking about forgiveness uh, and um, uh, the you know, various aspects of the forgiveness itself as uh, Jesus is trying to explain that to Peter. In fact, as you read chapter 18, entire chapter 18 is, uh, um, you know, um, um, is an expression uh, of Jesus, uh, God's heart on forgiveness. While we obviously cannot go dwell on the other things, but let's just stick to this parable and kind of glean out a uh, few things that we can learn. Um, uh, this, the, at least in, the, in this parable, I know uh, while this is a familiar parable, there are a couple of things that we do need to address. I, I actually, there are three things that I'm trying to address today um, um, for, for, for the sake of um, uh, learning, for the sake of reminding ourselves of, of the kind of goodness God shown towards us, and for the sake of uh, our Christian walk itself here on earth as to what God expects us to live, how, how God expects us to live. Um, first of all, obviously, uh, uh, there's so much of talk about forgiveness. We must then uh, start with the question as to why forgiveness is so important. Why is it so important? And I kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is really important for us to understand why forgiveness is important, both receiving and offering forgiveness. You know, of course, this parable primarily um, not only talks about receiving forgiveness, it also talks about offering forgiveness. Both receiving and offering forgiveness is really important. Both the receiver and the offerer 
experience the life transforming moments when they offer forgiveness. What um, uh, the guy who received the forgiveness and what the guy um, uh, couldn't offer uh, forgiveness, uh, uh, um, both are life transforming moments for him. When you receive forgiveness, <clears throat> God is, um, uh, uh, and the kind of forgiveness that you would receive, exp uh, uh, you know, shows to you how much goodness God is showing towards us. Most of us, as we look into our own personal lives, recognize that none of us either are eligible nor are worthy to receive the goodness of God in our own personal lives, the kindness of God for our own personal lives. We do know that nothing and no one can uh, ever um, help us um, um, if um, we are demanded to pay back for our, for our sins. And yet we all received forgiveness from God. We all. And when we received that forgiveness from the Lord, uh, we have experienced a life transformation. We've seen how things changed, how our worldview changed. We have seen how uh, our behavior changed. Everything about us changed, took some turn. Um, so receiving forgiveness is a, is a great experience. At the same time, offering forgiveness itself is also a great experience. Now for the Lord, who is the author of the forgiveness, um, there's nothing called life transformation for him, obviously. He's an unchanging, everlasting God. He's the same as today, today, and forever. But for, for, for those of us who received forgiveness and now are in a position to offer that forgiveness, it's a totally different life transformation experience for us too, as we offer. When we are in a position of receiving, we know we are utterly helpless, worthless, to receive something like this. And when we did receive that forgiveness, we have seen how receiving that forgiveness changed our life. Now, as an as a offerer, as somebody who needs to offer the same forgiveness to somebody else, um, when we offer that forgiveness, we will have a different life transformation experience. We will see the power of forgiveness at work firsthand in the person whom we are offering and what effect it will have upon us. Can you imagine this picture uh, in the parable? If that debtor, the first one, after he received the forgiveness, went back to his brother, the fellow brother, fellow uh, servant, and offered the same kind of kindness and said, listen, I know it's just hardly 100 dinari. I, I know you are struggling to pay me back. And I can understand, you know, I've been in that position. Um, I, 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 I wish I, I can have the 100 dinari, but I can't. I can, I can understand you can't pay me back at this point of time. Um, I can give you more time. No problem. Take your time. That itself would have been an act of kindness. Even though he received full, for, full pardon, he could offer, I will give you more time. It still would have been an act of kindness. But in the light of what he had received, the appropriate way for him to respond would have been, um, hey, since, you, since I received so much of grace, 100 dinara is nothing. It's OK if I lost it. I can always earn 100 dinara. It's not a problem. Uh, listen, you're, you're free. You don't have to pay me back at all. I've, I've, I've received so much of grace, and what you did for me, what you did against me is nothing. What you owe me is nothing. It's just forget it. No problem. Go. Have a, have a life. When he, if he did do that, and you know that there are people, uh, other servants who are watching this, this particular act taking place, imagine the kind of effect it would have had on them. You see, the guy who's receiving it doesn't know what had happened to him. But those who are around the first debtor know what had happened to him and they see the same forgiveness being offered to somebody else um, and this person receiving it with grace, with gratitude, his life would have changed. The people around uh, the first debtor who were watching this grace attack, uh, I mean, man, their lives would have been changed and it's a phenomenal experience. It would have been a phenomenal experience both for the receiver and the offerer. 
So why is forgiveness so important? Because forgiveness has a transformative power. It has a transformative power. And of course, for this forgiveness to work in our lives in an explosive way, we must receive it, we must seek for it with true repentance. It is true many of us do say sorry for what we have done and uh, go back to the same pattern. But if in true repentance, when you receive forgiveness, your life gets transformed completely. Uh, all things that uh, uh, you, know, you thought were lost would be restored back to you much in a, in a completely different sense. And God would begin to use your life in a very different way. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you have never experienced true repentance, you have never experienced true grace, chances are um, you will not be able to be in a position to offer it to others. If you have not received the grace that God offered to you with so much grace, um, um, if, if you have received it without true repentance, chances are you will obviously um, cannot respond in kind to others. But when you seek after forgiveness with true repentance, man, it transforms us. It has a transformative effect. There is power in forgiveness. There is power in forgiveness. Remember that today. There is power in forgiveness, both in receiving and in offering. That is what Jesus tried to illustrate to Simon, the Pharisee who had invited him for a banquet at his home, right? In Luke chapter 7, you see a sinful woman come into Simon the uh, Pharisee's home when Jesus is at dinner with him. And um, the transformative power at, at work in her life, in action, you would see that. How she expressed her gratitude. Um, you know, Jesus pointed that out to, um, to Simon in um, Luke chapter 7, verses 47, by telling him, tell, telling him, listen, this, this person, this person, her sins, they are so many, and I know they are so many, have been forgiven, and that's why she has shown me so much love. But a person who's forgiven for little shows only little love. So there you go. The lesson is very simple. Forgiveness has transformative power. There is power in forgiveness. Only when we seek it with true repentance can we experience that power at work. Only when we offer it, um, um, we will experience the true transformative power of, uh, of, of forgiveness. And the second question naturally leads us to uh, then what keeps us from forgiving uh, from receiving forgiveness first. We'll talk about how, what stops us from offering forgiveness before, uh, before that we do need to address what keeps us from receiving forgiveness, true, re true forgiveness. What keeps us from receiving forgiveness? First of all, obviously, the, uh, the natural um, um, answer would be, um, and the logical answer would be ignorance. Of course, we do not know that there is so much of grace at, at, at offer for us. There's so much of, Kindness of God uh, available to us and mercy of God available to us. If we go to him in true repentance, uh, we, you know, that God is willing to offer forgiveness to us, we may not have been aware of that kind of grace of God in our personal lives. And therefore, we obviously did not seek for it. And now I understand there, may, there are many people across the world, including some of us, who do not recognize the goodness of God and the grace of God. God is a kind God. Now, God is a just God. He would not obviously would want us to remain sinners. He obviously um, want us to be transformed. Uh, but before the transformation begins to take place, he do want us to come back to him in true repentance. And he is ready to offer grace and forgiveness and use that forgiveness to transform us. So ignorance can keep us from seeking, receiving forgiveness. Uh, it could also be possible that uh, we are stubborn Stubborn that, uh, 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 in a sense that, hey, I'm not a sinner. I've not done anything. I'm not, my, what I did was right. I, 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 everything that I said, everything that I did um, against that person, against this, whatever. I did it right because I think it is right. I felt it is right, whatever. You, you are stubborn in seeking 
for forgiveness. Even though you saw your actions and your, uh, our actions, even though we see our actions and our attitudes, our behavior affected somebody else, there could be times when we are not ready to seek for forgiveness and receive forgiveness from God because we are too stubborn to, uh, uh, um, to um, accept our part in the hurt. Um, so therefore, that keeps us from actually receiving the true forgiveness from the, from the Lord himself. And there is, obviously, there is another uh, reason why many of us may not be in a position to receive forgiveness because we, 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 we justify our actions. We find excuses. Hey, that, I did that because of this. I did that because he did that. I did that because... Uh, you know, um, uh, that guy did it and got away with that. What's wrong with me doing it? When, um, you know, there's, there may be legitimate excuses for many of actions that we do, that we commit. But none of them are legitimate in the sight of God. If God calls it a sin, it is a sin. And he is... Um, um, uh, in a, you know, in a position to punish you, yet he is willing to forgive you, unless you recognize the intensity of the actions that you have committed with the attitude, intention that you committed, with the heart that you committed, it is sin. Unless you understand the, uh, the gravity of the sin that is causing you to disobey the word of God and rebel against him, uh, you will not be able to receive. You will not be in a position to receive true forgiveness, you know, David, uh, the repentance of David is more effective than the repentance of Saul is because, um, you know, David's heart was in the right place. He recognized the sin itself is against God, not against a person, not against an individual, even though it was, in a sense, was committed in, against a person, it was against God. And that is why he sought forgiveness from the Lord, saying, God, please forgive me of my and then that does receiving a forgiveness. And here is something that we all need to understand. That there is a possibility we are not receiving forgiveness because of ignorance or stubbornness or even justifying our actions. There is also another possibility that we are not receiving forgiveness because we think you are unforgivable. We think we are unforgivable. Nobody can forgive us and God, can, God would definitely not forgive us. There is a possibility. I mean, I know God will forgive us, but yet you don't know the kind of things that I've done. I really don't think God, God will forgive a guy like me. Could be your uh, thinking. Some of us would think like that, right? Um, you know, we've... But here is something that I want to remind you, and I think this parable reminds us of that, that the spirit of forgiveness knows no boundaries. The spirit of forgiveness knows no boundaries. That's what Jesus was trying to say to Peter when he answered him back saying that how many times should I forgive? Not seven times, 70 times seven. His point is not the number. He says no boundaries. Keep offering forgiveness. So then the question naturally is what does it mean to offer forgiveness? Um, forgiveness is intentionally and willfully disregarding the offense. Forgiveness is intentionally, willfully disregarding the offense. Now, mind you, the offense hurts us. Mind you, the offense is not something that we, you know, that that is going to leave us with, leave us in a place where we are able to forget. And it is, it is, it is not as easy as when we say. Forgive and forget that, you know, none of us are ever in a position to forget a lot of stuff. What you are doing, obviously, human memory is such a powerful thing that we will remember uh, a lot of things that happened to us and we will remember a lot of offenses, hurts that we have experienced in our personal life. What forgiveness is truly is, is not forgetting. Obviously, that is not going to happen. What forgiveness is disregarding it. Yes, it affect, affected me at that point of time. Now that in the light of what I received from the Lord, I'm choosing to let it go. 
I'm choosing to disregard it. I'm choosing not to think about it. I'm choosing not to let it affect me. Intentionally, willfully disregarding. You see, a thing is only important to us as long as we consider it important. A thing only grabs our attention as long as we pay attention to it. And so therefore, it's the same with an offense. Somebody hurt us, somebody offended us. As long as we keep focusing on that, it will keep rising up hurt within us. But the moment we take our eyes off and focus on something else that is more important than this, the hurt is still there. I want you to know that. The offense is real, the hurt is real, the pain is real. But because you took your eyes off and focused on something else, uh, the pain of that is forgotten. Because you intentionally, willfully took your eyes off, off of the offense and put it on something, disregarding it, disregarding it. It's there, disregarding it. It's like, you know, when you take a child to a hospital and the doctor needs to give a shot to the kid. And, be, you know, if the child is too little, uh, there is no, you know, there's no real worry about that. But if a child can understand what is happening, naturally you would see the child is going to be afraid, afraid of what is coming on, it, on, on our way or his way. Um, with the needle, the doctor has to give a shot. And most of us know, as parents know, the one thing that we would do is to distract the child from the pain that is going to be inflicted upon them, right? When they are defocused on something else, when they are focused on something else, this pain at that point of time would just last for a second and then it's gone. Now, I took a simplistic uh, um, uh, example, but, but here, is, here is what I, I'm trying to point out. Um, if you need to offer forgiveness to people, then you must do it with true spirit by intentionally, willfully disregarding the offense. Um, I think that's what stops us from offering forgiveness because we are vengeful in our mind, vengeful in our thinking. Many of us are unable to offer forgiveness to others just like this guy, I, in my mind, can think, come up with two reasons why we don't offer forgiveness to others. One is vengefulness. That is, we are so hurt, so bitter against the hurt that caused us to be in the place that we are in today. Even though we received forgiveness from the Lord, we are unable to forgive the person who hurt us. It's because we are vengeful in our mind, thinking, how can that guy, how can that person, how can that girl, how can that family get away with this? How can that thing can get away with this, with what they have done to me unjustly? And But in the light of what we have received from the Lord, if we are not choosing to see what God has given to us, then we will be bitter against the person, against the things. So therefore, we will not be in a position to offer forgiveness. There's another reason why we may be unable to forgive people. It's because of ingratitude. When you forget what God has done for us, when we forget what God has done for us, we will then simply choose not to forgive others. I want to highlight two scriptures for you and then lead you to a concluding thought. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, um, verses 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness. Rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Let's look at another verse, and then I'll highlight something for you. Colossians chapter 3, verses 13. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you and you must forgive others. What this servant did not consider is to remember what God has done, what the king had done for him. And when he forgot what the king had done for him, ingratitude led to vengeful mind, which then dictated his behavior. That's why he couldn't offer forgiveness to his fellow brother. So there you go. 
Forgiveness is most effective in our lives when we receive it or offer it with gratitude. Forgiveness is most effective in our lives when we receive it or offer it with gratitude. That's what Paul is trying to say. Listen, remember, in the light of what Christ has done for you, what Christ has offered to you, you then choose to offer forgiveness to somebody else. If you're unable to do that, that means you have not received it in the right attitude that you're not grateful for what God has done for you. So both these actions, receiving and offering, require a heart of humility. We must receive forgiveness with true humility. We know we don't deserve it. We received it. When we know we don't deserve and yet we, we are being offered this grace, humility comes within our heart and it changes us. And then because we have learned what it means to be offered forgiveness, we would then be in a position to offer forgiveness to others. Um, it helps us to be gratitude, um, you know, to be transformed. Forgiveness is most effective when we receive it or offer it with gratitude. And so there you go. We now know why we need to offer forgiveness because forgiveness has transformative power. It changes us, both the receiver and the offerer. There is power in forgiveness. We talked about how uh, the second thing we have learned is forgiveness is intentionally and willfully disregarding the offense. The offense is there, the pain is there, but we are choosing to look away from the offense and look towards what God has asked us to go on to do, uh, disregarding the offense, willfully. And that can only be done in true spirit, with true spirit. And then, of course, forgiveness is most effective when we receive it or offer it with true humility with gratitude, and we offer it with gratitude, and when we receive it with humility, it becomes most effective. So let me lead you to communion right now, a place where we can partake together in communion. But the, the, the cross itself is the greatest example of this particular parable. Now, the parable itself is an example of the um, 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 statement Jesus made how many times should you forgive your friend? But the parable uh, itself has an example followed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ at the cross and from the tomb. Cross tells us, the death, on Je death of Jesus on the cross tells us um, that what he asked us to do, he did it, showed us it is possible. That he offered forgiveness to his offenders Father, for they do not know, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That he, nothing, not the cross, not what they are doing to him stopped him from offering that forgiveness. He did not harbor bitterness, neither did he get angry at him. He, in fact, took pity on them. Instead of being resentful, he chose to be forgiving. He showed that it is possible. At the Worst offense that can be committed against an innocent person was committed against Jesus. Jesus still chose to forgive us and offered that same forgiveness to all of us. And therefore, in the light of what we have received, we must then choose to offer forgiveness. Today, we're going to partake in communion together. The bread and the cup that symbolize the broken body, and the blood of Jesus Christ. These two are symbolic of what took place at the cross. We pray and we seek forgiveness. We sought forgiveness and we received forgiveness of Jesus Christ in our own personal lives. The bread, the broken body of Jesus Christ, the cup, the blood that was shed for us, both these remind us of the power of forgiveness that was given to us, offered to us, and we received. In fact, every time we come together and partake in this, we are reminding ourselves of how good God has been to us. But the question really is, are we today in a position to partake in this? We are given an opportunity to be partakers of this. 
But are we in a position to partake in this? Is there someone we still need to offer forgiveness? Is there something that is stopping you from offering forgiveness? Bitterness, anger, resentment. Or is there still something that is stopping you from receiving forgiveness by seeking for it? From the Lord or from someone else? I don't know. But wouldn't it be appropriate for us that before we partake in communion, and I understand the possibility of you getting up right now and going and finding out your brother, which of course Jesus prescribed for us to do that, uh, um, you know, uh, almost in an exaggerated way, to go find your brother uh, who offended you or who you offended and seek forgiveness from that brother before you come and offer your offerings, is what Jesus said um, in one of the parables that he talked about. And I understand that may not be possible right away. The person who offended you may not be around you right now. But there, there is one person you do and I do need to come to seek forgiveness and say, God, would you please forgive me? And that is Jesus, of course. Before partaking in this communion, would you seek for forgiveness? Forgiveness, not only for the offense that you caused, but forgiveness uh, for the bitterness that you are harboring because of the offense caused to you. Either way, we are the ones who are struggling. Either way, we do need to be released. So may we ask God before we partake in communion for forgiveness and give us, ask him to give us the heart to forgive, disregard the offense. Now, the chances of you going and finding out that person and seeking forgiveness or offering forgiveness may be slim at this point of time, but you can still do that. Pick up your phone, call them. If you are still access, you can do that. Uh, but you have done your part. If you have done your part, then you are free of guilt. You don't have to think about um, you know, how the other person responded. You just need a clean heart, clean slate in the sight of God. And so if you did not offer forgiveness or seek forgiveness, do that, at least starting with God right now. And then when the chance comes, seeking forgiveness or receiving forgiveness from the uh, person who caused offense or whom you caused the offense. If you've already done that from your side, you know, seek God, seek forgiveness from God uh, uh, um, uh, and offered forgiveness to somebody else that you needed to. Now, all you need to do is ask God to help you not to be bitter, not to harbor the bit pain anymore but that he would help you to disregard the offense and move towards a bright future. I'm going to take a moment to pray. Break the bread and pray for you. If you have your bread and the cup nearby you, um, you know, before we partake in communion together, would you just take this moment to seek forgiveness, offer forgiveness, and then we will partake together in the, in the, in the bread. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took some bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Every time you eat, remember. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after the supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant made with my blood. Every time you drink, remember it. Every time you eat and drink this bread and the cup, you remember the Lord's coming. Not only the Lord's coming, but you remember what Christ has done. In the light of what we receive, may we offer forgiveness, receive forgiveness. Father, we thank you once again for this morning. Thank you for powerfully reminding us through the parable of Jesus Christ that we cannot be unmerciful servants. In the light of the great forgiveness that you offered to us, we must then choose to offer forgiveness to others. The offense may be big, but our offense towards you is much bigger, beyond imagination. And you have forgiven us of all, cleared us of all our debts. Now that we have received this, uh, help us to offer forgiveness. If there are things that are stopping us from receiving or offering forgiveness, would you deal with them? At the cross, you broke, uh, you allowed your son's body to be broken and the blood to be shed so that our sins, our offenses can be broken. We can be cleansed completely from our past. Thank you for such grace. You offered it freely, willfully, intentionally. You chose to disregard our past and chose to uh, give us a new life. And thank you for that. And so help us, God, to do the same. So help us, God, when opportunity comes across our way, our path, help us to do the same.
would you please help us? Thank you for um, the opportunity to partake in bread and the communion together. And today, as we seek and receive, and as we choose to offer forgiveness, um, Holy Spirit, would you enable us? Give freedom to us. Set us free from our guilt, from our past, from our hurt. Bless you, God. Bless you. Let's all partake together at this time in taking of this bread as we remember the broken body of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, let's all partake together in taking up this cup as we remember the blood that was shed for us at the cross, which cleanses us from all our past, all our sins, all our hurt, giving us a fresh life, new life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. What a joy it is for us, isn't it? To be in the presence of God, to be set free. And to be taught that we can be free just by choosing to offer forgiveness. And it can only be received with true repentance. It can only be offered when we are grateful. So may God help us to receive with true repentance and offer it with true gratitude and humility, then we will experience the transformative power of forgiveness within our lives and around us. May God enable you, help you to do that. He give you courage. May he give you kindness. May he fill you with his love to offer the same to your offenders. Thank you for joining us today on our online service. Do make sure you do join us on our 21-day morning prayers. We are continuing to talk about parables, multiple parables uh, through the scriptures. There are many parables that Jesus taught and there are many things that we can learn. Some may be familiar to us, but yet they are useful for us. If you have an opportunity to join us at DC, do go ahead and join us at 7 a.m. And we'll be here for an hour till 8 uh, a.m. And then we will depart from here um, online. Of course, we will start the uh, online 21-day devotion also at 7 a.m. Um, so do you, either you... Tune in uh, on Facebook or YouTube or you join us here at this place. Um, either way, we are grateful to God that you are choosing to take time and to be in the presence of God. And may God um, you know, richly bless you and speak to you. And I, I pray that you would have a wonderful week ahead. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together as we close this service and also receive the blessing from the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the love of our Father and the grace of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each one of us now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, may you have a wonderful week. Do make sure you join us for our 21-day devotion. God bless you.